We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Stock Talk. Uh, Today, we want to talk about Palantir Technologies. It's been around for a little while, uh, but it's getting a lot of news lately. So Austin, tell us what you found. Yeah, so it's been uh, gaining a lot of traction recently. I mean, up 11% on Monday of this week. Uh, Obviously, in the news is kind of the AI craze starts to take off. It's something that we've been looking a lot into as well. We'll talk a little bit more about it later, but we do have an AI report kind of loaded up and and ready to go that we'll be sending out next week to our subscribers. But wanted to take a look at it because it's, it's had a great run. It's a very interesting story. Maybe, Andrew, you can take us through a bit more of who's involved, uh, who some of the players are, and, and a general overview of the company itself. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is big data, big tech. It's a $42 billion market cap company, New York Stock Exchange traded. PLTR is the symbol. We're talking it's you know big data uh, software as a solution, so SaaS, but also Department of Defense. So this kind of goes in your military industrial complex kind of not entirely, uh, but it's a, it's a good chunk of the business. So just to take a step back, Palantir was created in 2003. Uh, they build a category leading software that empowers organizations to create and govern artificial intelligence across public and private networks. Uh, they derive actionable insights from sensitive data and achieve their most challenging operational objectives. Uh, so what is interesting is that they are all of these components, also controversial but it's also shrouded in a lot of secrecy because their very first investor was the CIA. Uh, so what we should do is let's, you know, just mention also that I was just, it's it's kind of fun that Palantir is named from the Lord of the Rings, uh, the movie. Uh, and this is made up of the co-founder, Peter Thiel, who many people know. I enjoy his, his perspective on uh, politics, on education, uh, he, he's a very wise person. Never mind, he is a, a big tech billionaire uh, involved with PayPal. You know, friends with Elon Musk. Uh, but they saw this as being a mission-oriented company. So, uh, you know, focusing on PayPal's uh, recognition systems, but they wanted to apply it to reduce terrorism while preserving civil liberties. And as I mentioned, the CIA was one of the first uh, using their venture venture capital arm in QTEL. Uh, and also Peter Thiel himself put $30 million in uh, to create the company. Uh, a little bit more interesting, and we can talk about, about more of this on our subscription base. Uh, the CEO is Alex Karp, who is a friend of Peter Thiel's as well. They met at Stanford. Now, what's interesting about him uh, is that he is a self-described socialist. Uh, so we can have a bit more. Now, this isn't someone who's kind of ignorant of terminology. So what he specifically means by that. Uh, you know, it may not be the same as what one thinks when they they throw the, the handle around a lot. He is uh, for strong borders and strong immigration. Uh, and sometimes when people say they're uh, they're a socialist, it might just mean that they they want some sort of universal health care, uh, which is a, a highly politicized uh, conversation, but not not certainly not a socialist. Uh, but now he didn't vote for Bernie Sanders. He's a Hillary Clinton supporter. So there's a in, in any event, it's an interesting conversation because Peter Thiel is definitely not that, but it highlights how two people that have different political backgrounds and perspectives can work together and create uh, a company that uh, that, that works in the, in the military industrial complex. So this is a company that is definitely controversial. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, you even go back to the name mentioning that it was named for Lord of the Rings. The the, the Palantir in Lord of the Rings is something that like the wizards kind of use to see the future. So the name kind of applies uh, in a sense with the company as well and, and the AI and the kind of sh- uh, shift into the future that AI is going to be obviously a dominant part of. But it is it is interesting how you have these kind of two different idea ideological people working together on this project and then you get the cia involved it's a very interesting company and what makes it even more interesting is obviously the fact that there's an earnings report that's going to be coming out uh next week and it's the review or the the the, uh, analysis around that is widely varied depending on who you look at you know that we've got dan ives who's with uh wedbush securities he's got a uh a price value of anywhere from you know 22 to 25 dollars for this stock but then if you head over and look at someone like Morningstar Metrics and their kind of uh, projection goes completely the other way, they say that there's a high uncertainty rating. 
that their overall value is a one star value and they think a fair estimate for stock values at around nine dollars so two very different ends of the spectrum i noticed that seeking alpha this morning actually downgraded it from a buy as well uh, that came out this morning so lots of different kind of takes obviously a very volatile kind of situation but what do you make of all of that andrew well, I think that's the, the key. It's going to be a volatile work for uh, for this company. And we haven't we certainly haven't done a huge in-depth uh, dive on it, but we will pre present it on the site for people. They've got three products. They've got Gotham, Apollo, and Foundry. Uh, and just quickly, Gotham, it's their counterterrorism analyst office. That's kind of the one that the DOD is very uh, uh, impressed with and works with. Uh, Apollo uh, is more of their architecture or software kind of architecture platform. Uh, Foundry is used for corporate clients. So now, like we said, it is a very strong DOD, uh, CIA, big data. Uh, you know, one of the things they got it, you know, kind of criticized for was they work with ICE. So those who are, who are believe in open borders, uh, they don't like that because they can track down people. Um, so it's very highly politicized. Um, but interesting nonetheless. But some of their corporate clients, and that's been building and growing, are Morgan Stanley, Merck, uh, Airbus, uh, PG&E, uh, Fiat Chrysler Automobile, and of course, uh, most notably, Amazon SageMaker. So, and it is that this is a big data AI company. And if you want to talk AI, this is this is a real player in AI. And that once again gives the shout out that we'll have an AI report out very soon for for uh, for people. One of the good takeaways from this is that this has been around for a while, but last uh, quarter was the first time it, that, that Palantir was uh, was profitable. And they expect the entire year of 2023 to be up the first profitable year. So not only does that highlight how critical this next earnings report is, uh, it, it it bodes well for the stock. Now, whether it, at the price it is, that's a whole other ball, ball game, but that does possibly mean that there's a a turning point for the company of going from a theoretically functional, profitable revenue generating company to uh, an actual company that's, you know, earnings per share growth uh, is, is possible. Yeah, because I mean, they had a very impressive kind of operating cash flow on their last quarterly report. I think it was something to the tune of about 187 million. And they're projecting some, some revenue increases to the tune of about $530 million as well. So obviously, like, these are big numbers we're talking about. But another kind of really interesting thing about it goes back to what you had mentioned earlier in their own description of the company, they mentioned uh, being involved in creating regulatory framework for AI. And that's something that guys like Peter Thiel and uh, Mark Andreessen, Elon Musk, a lot of big tech guys have all kind of been talking about this. So when you have that already interesting relationship with the Department of Defense, with the CIA, and then you're talking about a company that is saying one of their priorities is creating the regulatory framework for AI, I think that's something you have to be uh, paying attention to. I think that's part of what's really driving this. When you talk about uh, you know big data companies, you've got Snowflake uh, is is very well known and and uh, understood in the market, and Palantir is the other one that has. But once again, it is the most controversial one out of out of any. And what we'll dive into a little bit deeper is this latest contract with the Department of Defense, uh, where it's their uh, Digital Information System Agency (DISA), and uh, their federal and commercial licenses of the th uh, 3450 and 3550 MHZ spectrum band radio. So that sounds kind of boring and it sounds you know, like, well, who cares? We're going to get into that in more depth uh, for subscribers, but that alone, that one kind of hint that's kind of been glossed over, that could be something significant moving forward as far as solidifying their relationship with uh, the government, with the certainly the Department of Defense side of the government. Uh, and what is good about that is that they're a good payer for long term. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> they, they, they're they a good person to be selling products to. Uh, and that would be a very big positive. But once again, people might want to keep away from this stock simply just off of moral, uh, you know, you know, political stance. But we certainly find this company to be very exciting and one that with the development of AI and what's coming down the pipeline, it could really become a, a big name and big player. Yeah, it definitely has the opportunity to do so. And, and like you mentioned, we're going to dive into a bit more on, on our message board about, you know, kind of some of their products, but also when that earnings report comes out next week, we'll have a piece on our message board, breaking down kind of uh, how our feelings may have changed or shifted 
after those earnings reports come out, how maybe some of that volatility is going to be affected. And then, of course, our AI report, which we're planning to have out by the end of next week as well. So really diving into the AI space a little bit. Obviously, we've kind of dipped our toes in with some other companies before, but uh, it's another kind of opportunity to really get in, 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 interested and invested in a massively emerging market. And I think that's a very exciting thing. And I think anyone who's not paying attention to AI right now should probably start because it's going to be the the main talking point on so many different fronts uh, over the next couple of years. It's a truly fascinating subject. And just to throw some fuel to the fire, uh, and we're not going to have any comment on this, but in the last month, or past month, the stock's up 20%. In the past six months, it's up 100%. But bear in mind, it's still almost half of what its all-time high is. The all-time high is around $38.18. So that might make it more of an opportunity, more interesting. It certainly makes it more volatile. So listen, it's going to be an interesting week and we're all going to be waiting to see what those earnings come out to. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. We're going to be paying attention. Make sure you're locked in on our YouTube channel and subscribed right here, but also on the website as well so you can get that extra analysis that we'll be putting up there. It's going to be fascinating, Andrew. I'm, I'm really excited to kind of see where this story goes going forward. All right, everyone. We'll see you later. We'll talk to you real soon. Take care, guys. Thank <laughs> you.